Welcome back. In the previous step, we have defined an entity called person. And in this step, we'll create a new class to manage the entity. It is called a repository. So let's get started. So I would need to now say person JPA repository. I'll put it in a package called dot JPA. Let's finish. One of the things I would need to say is this is a repository. That's number one. One of the other things that you need to also say is we would do transaction management in here. So whenever we insert rows and delete rows, whenever we do an update to the database, transactions become very important. When you do three or four steps or three or four updates in a single transaction, you'd want all of them to be successful or all of them to fail together. For now, we would implement transactions at the level of a repository. Ideally, transactions have to be implemented around your business services. But for this example, we'll restrict our view to the repository. So we'll need to say this is a repository. We would need to have transactions around this. The other thing is we need to have some way to connect to the database. How do we connect to the database? That's the other thing that we would need to finalize. If you remember in Spring JDBC, we used a JDBC template. The JDBC template was auto-wired with a data source connection and we used that to fire our queries. So what do we use in here in the JPA repository? That's another thing which we need to work on. And after that, the typical thing that we would want to do is to create our method to do the retrieve of the data. What we'll do is we'll start with find by ID method. So I'll copy the one from our person JDBC DAO. So here, now I would want to return the person for that specific ID. However, here I don't want to use JDBC. I'd want to get it by using JPM. Okay, let's get started now. The way you can say this is a repository is by at repository. And the way you can define transactions here, Spring makes it very easy to implement your transactions just by saying at transactional. Two things done. Now I would want to be able to connect to the database for that there is something called an entity manager. Entity manager manages the entities. All the operations that you are performing in a specific session are all stored inside your entity manager. All the operations are not really stored in the entity manager, but in something called persistence context. Entity manager is the interface to the persistence context. All operations have to be going through the entity manager. Let's import the entity manager and the persistence context. Now, I want to do a find by ID. How do I do that? Entity manager dot find. There are a number of find methods inside the entity manager. The one which we'll be using is what entity? This is a person entity. And what is the primary key? The primary key is ID. That's it. You are now ready to get rocking and rolling. I've organized the imports in here. One of the things I will do right now is I'll rename the database demo application. I'll rename this. So I'll rename this to this is Spring JDBC demo, right? Yes, rename the tests as well. That's fine. And now I'll copy this and call this JPA demo application. This would help us have clear separation between them. One of the things is Spring Boot would do automatic component scan on this package as well. So Spring JDBC demo application would also get triggered. I don't want that to happen. So I'll remove the annotation or even better, let's just comment out Spring Boot application annotation on the Spring JDBC demo application. What we are doing here is just to make sure that the JDBC code does not get fired. So we are doing a lot of updates in here. We don't want them to confuse whatever we are doing with JPA. So I've commented all that stuff out. Now, I'll go to the JPA demo application, and now we want to do the same operations. However, what we want to use is a repository. Which repository? Person JPA repository, right? I'll import it in. I'll also rename this. It's not a DAO anymore. It's a repository. Some of the methods are not really there in the repository. That's okay. So there will be compilation errors. That's fine. What we'll do is we'll I'll move this line down. So we have implemented person find by ID. So let's comment all the other stuff out. We'll uncomment them as we implement the other methods. Cool. Now, this is good. So we have now a simple find by ID 10001 method, which is running using JPA. 
there's a small error that we would face when we run this but I would rather show the error and then fix it so let's do a run as Java application okay the error says table person already exists what's happening here why is table person already existing where are we creating the table person we are creating it in data SQL right so in data.sql we are creating the table in here one of the magics of Spring Boot auto configuration is the fact that it knows that we are using in-memory database and it knows that JPA is in the class path. It knows that I am defining entities as well because I put the at entity. So what it does is it triggers something called a schema update, which is one of the J Hibernate features. So what it does is when we are using a in-memory database, it automatically creates the schema for us. So from now on, you don't really need to define the table. So I don't need to create the table now on because the table would be created for me by who would create the table for me? The table would be created for me by the schema update. The schema update is triggered by Spring Boot auto configuration and it's one of the features in Hibernate. So whenever we are connecting to a embedded database, the schema gets automatically created. All that you need to do is insert the data in. Let's kill the application and run it again. Now, that's cool. Now, the person object is being printed here. So, person ID 10001, that's cool. But I'm not able to see the query which is being executed. I would rather want to be able to see the query so that I'm sure that the query which went to the database is right. How do I do that? I can do that by spring dot jpa dot show sql is equal to true. That's it. All that is needed is this. And let's fire up the application again. Cool. Now you'd be able to see the table definition in here as well. You can see that Hibernate is creating the table definition for us. This is triggered by Spring Boot auto configuration. The other thing you can also see in here is the query that is getting executed in here. You can see that there's a select from person, person with an ID being executed in here. In this step, we implemented a simple method to retrieve a person by ID. And also we enabled the show SQL for JPA. Other than that, we had to actually remove the definition of the person table from our data.sql because this is directly initialized by schema update of Hibernate, which is triggered by Spring Boot auto configuration. Until the next step, bye-bye.